Managing plugin dependencies with Autofac is something that I've had a pattern for for a few years now. And before I get into this video, I was curious if you use Autofac or some other dependency injection framework, how have you been trying to manage your plugin dependencies? So what we're going to be looking at today is trying to set up plugin dependencies, working around some circular dependency issues with a little bit of a tweak. And then from there, we're going to see how we can go build a better solution for this issue. So if that sounds interesting, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel because it really helps me out. And with that said, let's jump right into the code. So the tweak that I'm going to make is actually that we're going to explicitly call the implementation of the repository facade a repository facade. So how that's going to look is that I would say something like my repository facade implements an I repository. And I'll explain how this fixes it, why I'm not a huge fan. So you can see just it's a it's a marker interface, right? Some people like violently dislike the idea of a marker interface. I don't know. Um, it's a tool. It seems to work for me. Um, so I was using it this way. This marker interface still has the same requirement that it needs to implement this method that I have highlighted. But now the difference is that when I go here, I'm going to ask for the I repository facade. But there's one more trick. If I run this, it still doesn't fix it. Okay, so we still get a circular component dependency. And here's the other trick that's going to happen. And that will be that I need one more type of interface. And I'm going to put that in the shared spot. This is what I've been doing. So I would take a similar interface and I would say this is now the discoverable one, a discoverable repository, yet another marker interface. Oops, I spelled that totally wrong. There we go. The solution that I have that has been working for me for a long time across many different types of projects, we're talking applications with WPF front ends, we're talking about console tools, we're talking about uh, literally monolithic server architecture and mic uh, microservice architecture. If you can write it in C Sharp, I've been basically writing applications that use these marker interfaces like this. Now we change these to be iDiscoverable. So the trick that we're implementing is is that once these are marked, we are going to tell our facade, you're not just looking for any repository, it needs to be discoverable. The way that I thought through this before was like, okay, well, the reason it works technically is because now there isn't a circular dependency, right? There's a common interface, but my object repository facade depends on these guys. This actual class does not implement this, so circular dependency is now broken. That's great. But my thought process was it's discoverable because we're requiring that other, you know, implementations in these DLLs, they're going to have registered their plugin with Autofac. That's what makes it discoverable. That was my thought process. And I guess if I know it's working that way and I'm building applications, it's easy to follow the pattern. If we run this, does it work? Well, I think at this point it works, but it's not going to do quite what we want yet. So it didn't blow up. Excellent first step. But of course, when we ask for all of the objects, nothing here yet. We need to get our DLLs into the output directory. Okay, I'm going to use a bit of a cheater method here. This is something that I do in some of my uh, my code because of how the applications uh, are packaged and I know they'll be packaged a certain way. I'll explain why it's a cheater method. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually add project references to the example program for both the plugins. Now, it's a cheater method because our example program should not have to know about the existence of these plugins. I'm just using it this way so that Visual Studio will build these projects and put the DLLs into our bin directory for us. If you have questions about how um, how that's actually working and how I'm not actually able to see the implementations, like I can see the implementations from my now this project, right? So I could go in memory, I can see both of these plugins, right? You can see, maybe you can see it in my IntelliSense there showing up, but I'm never going to use them this way. It's a, a trust me bro moment. It's just so that I can have them put into the output directory, right? So I've done build, debug. You can see I have plugin one and plugin two DLL. That's literally the only reason I've done it this way, just to save some time. It works in a lot of stuff I do, but if you need to have um, different build systems and uh, other separation 
and dropping in plugins. Totally understandable. You can't use the same little shortcut I just did, but that's what it is. But that doesn't solve our registration problem. We can do um, something fancy. So generally what I do instead of just this line here is I actually would do look at the directory I'm running from and then I would scan over the executables and DLLs in that uh, output directory. It's a little bit overkill so I'm just going to register this module um, because we only have one in our core executable but now we have to go get the other ones dynamically and we're able to do that if we look at the container builder, we can do uh, register assembly modules, and it takes in a set of assemblies. So what I will still do is we're going to, we'll do a bit of a dynamic scan on the output directory. So we might do something like directory dot uh, get files assembly, get executing assembly. This will get us a reference to the assembly we're currently in. I want to get the directory where we're running from, and then I'm going to ask for all the DLLs in there. You could do, just to kind of illustrate what's going on here, you could have like your own filtering if you have a naming convention, or you could point to a different, you have a plugins folder or something, anything you want, you can do that. What? Oh, my apologies. Uh, I only got the file names. Um, this part I always mess up, so it's not assembly string. We want load from or load file. We'll find out. Um, it will blow up uh, one way if it's incorrect. So now we have a, an array of assemblies, and we'll register those. So this loads plugins dynamically for us. Not a lot of code, pretty cool, but we're not quite done. So if I run this, it's still not going to work, but let's just double check what it's actually trying to do. Um, I want to see if it's going to get the assemblies when we run this. But um, I'll explain what's missing in just a moment here. So assemblies, we have two assemblies in there, one for plugin one and plugin two. So far, so good. But when we do that and register them, we didn't actually make the autofac modules for those plugins. So that's a really quick step here. I'm just going to copy these modules in here. Again, this only works if you're following a plugin loading pattern with autofac. If you don't want to propagate autofac to your plugin system, you would have to tweak this, maybe wrap it a different way, um, or maybe you can follow a similar pattern with your other favorite um, DI framework. So if we open up plugin one module, we want to do in memory repository for plugin one, but we need to do it a little bit different. We're not just going to register the type because our repositories take in some content. We'll do new my object and plugin one, let's say, is going to have, um, well, we can be explicit. Let's have them labeled like this. And then we're going to copy and paste this, put it over here, give it a quick little rename. We will do one, two, three. And this type is, of course, for plugin two. When we run this, what we should see is that these modules get called, right? So plug in one module, as you can see, when I step over, I have now gone into the loading method for plug in one. If you remember my cheater shortcut, yes, we are referencing plug in one and plug in two from example program, but nowhere in my example program do I have any code that explicitly says and refers to plug in one. Here's plug in two, same story there. I just wanted to show you that it happens dynamically. So all the objects, what do we expect is inside here? All of the plugins. So we have all six, um, plugin one, plugin one, plugin one, and then the three from plugin two. This is just a quick example of the pattern that I've been following. Now that we have this as a good checkpoint, you can see that that's how that's been working. For me, it uses three interfaces. Two of them are marker interfaces, one for the facade and one for um, the plugins themselves, and then they share a common base interface. A couple of reasons why I wanted to move away from this are, one, the marker interfaces feel a little bit weird, and two, I will show you that if I needed to have another class, and it's also done through Autofac, and it needs to use the repository, let's say, we will actually ask to print out all of the objects from the repository. So. How does that look? Well, we would want to do this because 
like I said, we shouldn't have to know or care that we have a facade. That's the point of the facade. We should not know. And what we might do is like for each, we might, like we would want to do this, but this won't work um, exactly how you'd expect. So I will prove it. So I'm just registering it up here. Now what I'm going to do is actually say is uh, container resolve. And we're going to get the thing that does work and we will ask it to print. So what do we think is going to show up in the console? It's kind of interesting because we only get three of them and they're only from plugin two. Perhaps change the order of this stuff, right? I'm going to register my facade down here. What happens now? All three of them, sorry, all six, I can't do math. All six of them get printed out. So Okay, the order matters, and that's because AutoFAC, when you resolve a single service of something that's registered multiple times, it will take the last one, and the facade in this case is now the last one. But that's kind of sketchy because we really have to care about the plugin load order, and I don't like that at all. So how I work around that is I end up having to put this, and I call the marker interface, and I hate it. <laughs> I hate it because I need to know that some some repository I want to access, some service I want to access, has a facade. And to me, that defeats the whole point of the facade. This is the thing that I'm trying to solve, and I have a nice solution for it now, finally. And we will look at that next. In an upcoming video, of course. So just for a quick recap for what we looked at today was that we were able to break our circular dependencies with respect to our facade and the different repositories that we were passing into it by using marker interfaces. So the marker interfaces broke those circular dependencies, and then as a result, we were able to resolve them properly with AutoFAC. So if you use AutoFAC or some other dependency injection framework, if you have a different solution for overcoming this, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. So if you thought that was interesting, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and make sure you watch the next video where I show you my solution for how I've overcome this problem more recently.